So one of the kind of issue that arise, the new issue that arise with this crisis is uh, medical waste. So maybe you already see that the masks are everywhere and they uh, first they end up on the street and then in the rivers and then in the oceans. Uh, not only masks, but for example, this is a government poster that mandates uh, people in Moscow, in Russia, to wear gloves. So this is mandatory to wear gloves. Of course, this also ends up in, on the streets and uh, we have the severe plastic pollution. Uh, some old issues uh, are rethought. For example, if we take a look on the current um, number of deaths from coronavirus, it's around 500,000. But at the same time, what about air pollution? So the World Health Organization tells us that uh, 7 million deaths every year are due to uh, air pollution, uh, such as stroke, heart disease, and lung cancer. So this is a much more bigger issue. It's also called the silent killer. <clears throat> and uh, this is the map. Uh, this is the satellite data of the European Copernicus Sentinel 5P satellite. And uh, it's uh, publicly available. Uh, you can go to, to this link. I will let, later uh, send it to you. Uh, you can, in real time, kind of check how the NO2, the air pollution, is concentrated in various region, regions of the world. So this is the fragment of Europe, and we see that, uh, for example, in 2019, in March, and uh, in March of 2020, how striking is the difference of the uh, NO2 concentration. So uh, maybe not surprisingly, we also see that the, the areas that are most hit by the coronavirus and uh, that had the most deaths are the big cities such as Milan, Madrid, and Paris. And we also see that they have a lot of concentration of NO2. Maybe there is some kind of correlation. And in fact, uh, there are papers. So this is the example of paper where uh, researchers look at the, the correlation between the nitrogen dioxide levels and the, how it contributes to the coronavirus. And indeed, they say that the results indicate that the long-term exposure to this pollutant may be one of the most important contributors to fatality caused by COVID-19. So looking at this problem, actually uh, nowadays citizens, they notice that uh, the air is cleaner and uh, they don't really want to go back to the business as usual. So some citizens, uh, they say that uh, we want to keep our cities uh, more clean and uh, they would vote for restrictions of uh, vehicles in the city centers and so on. Also, I think that this crisis reminds us of uh, more existential issues such as climate change, of course, because uh, with this crisis, when you see that uh, people are dying and it's really happening and the nature they doesn't care whether you believe in science or not, it's the same for climate change, right? So it's really happening, it's really deadly. And if we are not acting upon it, it's irreversible. So uh, I think that we are now in kind of like a critical juncture on the crossroads. So we can go back to the business as usual and regrow our economies and uh, so on and start uh, life as usual with emitting our uh, CO2 and so on or we can go to a more sustainable future, to the sustainable development. So I think that this is the moment uh, for action, this crisis. It's a kind of a window of opportunity. So as I said before, we start to realize the brute reality uh, that this is real. So we can ask ourselves, okay, so how do we act? So as Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. Right, so we cannot use the same uh, actions. So what can we do? Uh, search for alternative solutions. And uh, for example, what kind of solutions? There are various, the so-called niche level innovations, the technology and social range. For example, uh, technology such as renewable energy, although it's uh, already quite uh, normal, 
but still, um, it's on less than 10% of the total energy production. Uh, so this kind of technologies as renewable energy, energy storage, the hydrogen, electric vehicles, they are already there, but they are still in their kind of like a small niche. But since they are already there, we can use them, and uh, uh, this is the opportunity to use them. And uh, also, not only technology uh, should be innovated, but also social arrangement. For example, we, I think that we should have a new values and awareness. Uh, we should think not only about rivalrous economic growth, but have like more noble uh, compass, such as, for example, SDGs. And uh, a lot of researchers, they argue that the participation and the behavioral change of all global actors and urban actors is important. So we are all in the same boat. And uh, basically what we need is to reform our institutions so that they also arranged in the same way. Um, so I think that suddenly in the, during the crisis, we see that these niche solutions actually seems much more viable. viable. And uh, how can we implement them? Well, I think that we need to innovate our governance on different levels, like the city government, the governance, national governance, global level. And uh, in that case, we, we just got to try. And this is the, our opportunity for change. 